a brief progress update um, on the first year of the PCAR project. And uh, yeah, it's been uh, it's been a pretty uh, jam-packed uh, year. Um, I did a, a bit of an introduction in, uh, last year. Um, I'm going to keep this short um, because we've got such an extensive program today. Um, but yeah, if you want to hear more detail, um, catch me at the bookstall at the back. Um, we've also got um, an introductory video about the project generally. Um, so lots more information there. So, so catch me there um, if I fly through things here. Um, but for those of you who weren't at TAFAC last year, um, where were you? But um, yeah, as a brief means of introduction, um, Perth and Kinross uh, Heritage Trust uh, commenced this three-year project of um, developing an uh, archaeological research framework for the Perth and Kinross Local Authority region um, in August 2018. Uh, its primary aim is to create a regional framework that's relevant and functional, uh, helping to make the historic environment a value-adding resource which enriches people's lives and strengthens communities through sense of place, identity and education. Now we're realising this aim through a three-phase work plan, beginning with assessing and summarising the extent of current archaeological knowledge on past human activity in the region. Uh, and then through specialist contribution, review and targeted discussion with stakeholders, we then aim to identify gaps in this knowledge base and establish a series of research questions and priorities to address them. The result is hopefully a framework that can be used to appropriately and economically direct future archaeological research, whether that's developer, academic or community led. Now, it's a project which we hope will provide practical outcomes and assistance for everyone, from region residents and visitors, to historic environment managers, to curators and interpreters, and to anyone considering or undertaking research in the region. Now, in both uh, process and product, we hope that the framework will also raise awareness of the historic environment and encourage public engagement with it. I should also add at this point, um, PCAR isn't being produced in isolation. It's designed to complement the Scottish Archaeological Research Framework, or SCARF, handily located on this side. Um, uh, see Leanne for more info later. Um, and uh, that's managed through the Society of Antiquaries of Scotland, um, who are also um, managing our regional framework. Um, and it's through funding from Historic Environment Scotland as part of Scotland's archaeological strategy. And uh, the programme of developing regional frameworks also includes the Islands and Highlands framework that are in process at the moment, uh, a couple of other ones uh, in development, I believe. Um, and the idea with the re regionals is that they will ultimately provide a much finer resolution picture that better informs our understanding of past human activity at both the regional and the national levels. So they're extensive pieces of work, um, but they've got an awful lot of potential and uh, yeah, they're, they're a really exciting um, contribution, which hopefully are, are going to be um, useful and uh, applicable to everyone um, as, as we go forward. So what have we been doing over the last year? Um, well, that's uh, been kind of uh, umbrellaed as phase one. Um, which has been the assessment phase um, of the project. And over the past year, we've been getting the discussion going uh, by making contact with active researchers and specialists working in the region and gathering data sources together to review and assess the status of our current knowledge. Now, we've got over 4,000 sites, monuments and listed buildings of national importance in Perth and Kinross, but that's just a small fraction of the 18,000 records that are held in the region's historic environment record. So a big part of the year one knowledge assessment phase has been taking all that raw information and breaking it down into manageable, meaningful data sets. So effectively taking data that looks like this, which is a massive cloud of, of uh, sites and monuments in the HER, and then breaking them down into, um, and turning them into spreadsheets and distribution maps, uh, a little bit more like this. Um, that are um, 
a little bit clearer to interpret and um, can be used in more meaningful ways. Now, as part of the knowledge assessment phase, uh, we brought on board uh, specialists for each of the eight major chronological periods spanning known human activity in the region, from Mesolithic through to modern. Now, we've also formed a panel of environmental and scientific experts to inform on this highly specialised aspect of archaeological knowledge making. And they're, can, um, they're meeting um, to move forward those aspects. Um, at, at the moment, kind of separate from the chronological period development, um, but the idea is that they'll all then integrate um, as, as we take it forward through the review year, which is phase two. Um, now, the, the specialists have contributed knowledge summaries, uh, gaps and future research um, perspectives and priorities, um, but they are from their angle, um, and they're providing just a kind of a, a skeletal core structure uh, for the framework. Um, they're by no means intended to be definitive, um, but they offer us a strong baseline from which wider discussion through workshops and consultation um, can then bring uh, kind of further contributions which are sort of the flesh and the muscle um, on the strong and effective framework. Um, generally, we find that uh, if, if people have something to work from in the first place, um, it can really assist with the, um, them providing uh, their own contributions and, and feeding in uh, into larger documents. So that's really been the intention of having these specialists um, produce these, these initial uh, kind of priority um, knowledge gap and assessment drafts um, just to, to act as kind of a, a, a stimulus um, to, to encourage other, other contributions. Um, so the idea is that ultimately we'll then be able to build a framework that's um, been built with as many voices for as wide an audience as possible. Now, uh, the Priorities in Progress Conference uh, at the end of August this year uh, was the first major discussion and consultation event of the project. And we had over 90 people contribute uh, to eight chronological workshops, uh, one which was Mesolithic and environmental, so it kind of covered two aspects. Um, and the workshops were initiated by uh, discussion-provoking talks, and they were chaired by the specialists who were available and willing to come on board at the beginning of the project. So uh, it was a very successful day in that uh, we had a lot of useful input. Uh, it was received from a broad range of stakeholding representatives who attended. And it would be fair to say the comments raised on the day and since have been both critical and constructive. Um, there have been highlighting gaps, imbalances, uh, and raising questions about the framework structure and how it's working. And this is exactly what you'd hope for um, when you're seeking to undertake such a big piece of strategic work like this. Uh, we want this to be uh, as useful to as many different groups and individuals as possible and reflect as many voices and perspectives as possible. Um, so it's really, um, it's really uh, helpful and, uh, and productive to have um, this, uh, the critical and the constructive uh, commenting going on this, um, from, the, from the conference. So, um, yeah, for the best part, it, uh, it really it did what it was intended to do, which was um, stimulate um, and provoke um, contributions and viewpoints, uh, which we can then take on board. So we've learned a lot, a lot from the conference. Uh, we're taking the comments received on board, and we're working to integrate the responses received into the framework, and we're making structural refinements to address the issues that were raised and continue to be raised as we go through. So what's next? Um, we're, we've just moved into phase two, uh, which is the review year. Um, and we're looking to consult with active researchers, heritage professionals, and local interest groups to gather views and opinions more widely. Uh, so the contributions already received are either directly, uh, either directly from individuals or via the conference are being worked up into consultation chapter drafts now, um, which we'll then be looking to put out to wider review at the beginning of next year. And this is the point where we very much want your views and ideas on the drafts, as well as contributions from other research that's going on uh, or might not yet be represented within the drafts. 
Um, so this is just um, a, a big kind of push to, uh, to encourage you to get in touch if you're interested in being uh, part of that process. Um, we're envisaging a lot of it being digital, um, online contributions. Um, we're sort of developing a, a, a ex and exploring a, um, a kind of a knowledge transfer hub um, forum. Uh, so we'll be able to put the drafts up there um, to allow people to, to review them. Um, prior to that happening, we've still got the comments card system um, available through the PCARF page of the Heritage Trust website. And that's just a, an online kind of feedback form that would allow you, that is broken up by um, by kind of chronological uh, periods, and that allows you to kind of feed in any um, any kind of pressing thoughts um, or perspectives you have on on um, kind of uh, our, the extent of our current knowledge, uh, any gaps that we might have, or future priorities we might have. Uh, nominating of case studies, etc. So, so that system is in place and it's online and live. Um, so, uh, yeah, if you can't wait for the drafts to come out, um, then yeah, take a look at that and uh, and throw some comments in. Um, it'd be great to have those. And all of that then feeds into phase three, uh, which is really about formalising the contributions received into practical and relevant outputs for the different stakeholding and user groups. Um, and then the completed framework is scheduled to be launched around August 2021. Um, and we're still kind of having some thoughts about what that launch will look like. Um, so again, we welcome your thoughts there um, on different output forms, what you think might best benefit community users, uh, commercial sector or academic researchers. Um, so the real takeaway message is get in touch, get involved, um, join the discussion. This is meant to be um, a document, um, hopefully in lots of different formats, um, that is usable um, for everyone, um, that uh, we can update, we can continue to move. It's, it's not going to be a, a fixed line thing, um, but it can, be, it can be more effective and it can be stronger um, the more voices and the more opinions we get. Um, so, yeah, if you, if you contribute, we'll end up with a... A better outcome. So that really, that's my my plug is just to encourage you to um, to get involved. Um, as I said, you can get the the comments card up on uh, on the on the web page, um, and yeah, or either that or just get in touch with me. You'll find my contact details on the website as well. Um, lots of opportunities. Contribute archaeological data or research that you might be gathering or be aware of. Nominate key projects or case studies, places. Um, that you feel are important and need to be considered or um, are really good at uh, summarizing or defining um, what we know about a period or, or an aspect of, of life in the past. Um, let us know about knowledge gaps, um, propose future research priorities. Um, give us a sense of, of uh, what you think is important for us to be on, uh, finding out more about and, and better understanding about our past um, through future work. Um, and then comment on the review framework drafts. Um, so yeah, that's that's really all for me. Um, yeah, join the discussion. Grab me in the, uh, at the at the bookstall during the breaks if you want to chat more about it, um, or get in touch through the website. Um, but yeah, enjoy the rest of um, the day. Thanks.